Hello, I'm Arthur. Welcome to my lab. This here is a Hitachi HD 63B03 chip. This is a 8-bit microcontroller uh, made by Hitachi and it is an equivalent of Motorola uh, 6803 chip. It's actually a little bit better. Hitachi uh, several times took Motorola chips and added some features to them, made them a little bit better. Um, so it's it's a little nicer to work with, but it's pretty much equivalent of uh, Motorola series chips. So I had this chip for, for years and I don't even remember where I got it, how I uh, came across these chips, but I had them and I always wanted to play with them. So finally I got around to uh, working with these chips. And so the uh, if you look at the data sheet, you'll see that they come in uh, several different footprints. I actually happen to have the 44-pin uh, footprint as well. And they come in uh, three different speed grades, the 1 megahertz version, the 1.5, and, and 2 megahertz version. And actually, the chips that I have are the 2 megahertz, so that's nice. And this chip is actually... Uh, pretty neat in that it has uh, built-in serial communications interface and it has a timer built-in so you can do some basic I.O. and basic microcontroller features but it can also act pretty much like a regular micro uh, microprocessor in that it has the data and address bus and you can hook up external memory to it and just use it as a micro uh, microprocessor, but also as a microcontroller uh, on top of the uh, timer and uh, serial communications interface. It has a little bit of built-in RAM, only 128 bytes of it, so you can't really do much with that. But for just basic testing, um, it, that's enough to play with it. So I first started with a breadboard. I put this chip on this breadboard and um, I made it running just because I, I wanted to first know whether these chips even work. I had them for so long I didn't even know if, if they still worked. So I designed a circuit to, uh, in a breadboard, but the problem was that uh, the connections of all these wires weren't all uh, that great and, and uh, I was running into problems just getting this thing to run. It kind of ran, but not really. It was choking. So finally I ended up designing a, a PCB for it. And of course, you know, I, I put that together. Um, the PCB turned out really nice, although I had to, um, I, I made some changes. So this is the original PCB and um, I'm in progress of designing a new version that uh, will have some changes uh, applied to it. But even in this old version, it's pretty handy, and um, I've already used it for uh, several experiments. I tested some other chips that I bought, um, so I was able to use this as a as a circuit to drive those other chips and, and test their functionality. And there's a little bit of software available out there for these chips. Uh, of course, that software was not written for this specific board, so the features differ a little bit, but it can be easily adopted. I came across a website that um, Mr. Eric Klaus has a <clears throat> I'm sorry has a uh, really nice website in uh, which he shows his board that he designed and it has a chip with a different footprint but also includes memory and um, he provides some very um, very handy resources. He has a great description of what what he has, and he developed this um, monitor system with BASIC that I was able to convert then to to my board. And um, yeah, he provides links to documentation for this chip and uh, some source code. So that's that's very valuable. So. Um, I adopted his code to my board and his basic has some uh, really simple features it's very simple basic very very 
um, low feature basic but it gets the, the the simple job done certainly good enough to play with and you can actually do a little bit of um, a little bit of IO with this uh, basic so you can write some simple programs um, there is no feature to to save these programs to any medium so that would need to be added that's a future addition and of course you know you, you need to be able to load your programs um, I guess you can just list them to the screen and, and then copy paste them using terminal um, that's a possibility so anyway I have this um, monitor running I can reset the board it blinks a few times and then starts uh, flashing this this indication that it's ready and I change the, the monitor a little bit to give a little more information and um, you can load your code for example uh, into memory that's what I've been doing I, I wrote code and converted that to hex numbers and then I would just copy paste hex numbers into this monitor and load my uh, program this way and then run it you can also assemble your assembly language code and um, some very nice features in this monitor and you can also uh, run basic you can start basic so to do that you just hit B and you're in basic language and then you can write simple programs the only thing is that uh, you have to write everything in the uppercase. Um, if you start writing in lowercase, then the basic um, software gets confused, and uh, I pretty much had to reset my board to get out of that. But you know, what, just for example, let's write a simple program. Of course, every um, computer has to have hello world. So let's do that. Let's print hello world. So we can list this code and then run it. Here it is. So yeah, you can run basic on this uh, simple board. You can write your assembly language programs and compile them and execute them on this board. And for that, I'm using DASM. That's a great little program that uh, compiles your assembly language uh, code and, and um, you can just uh, program your flash chip and run it. So nice little board. I'll have another video once I'm done designing and building the new version of the board and then I will probably release the new version of the board. This one currently is not really suitable for release because I made some changes and so it won't wor work with the newer version of the software. And um, I will also uh, release the, the software. I'll add some links uh, to the resources to the uh, description of this video. So, HD63B08. Oh, another thing, actually. <laughs> so, I bought a bunch of these chips on eBay. Here they are. I bought all of these chips on eBay, uh, thinking that I'm going to play with them. And they are HD63B03 chips, except I think what, what they really are, are... Um, the 1 megahertz version, not the 2 megahertz version. So my board runs at 2 megahertz, of course, or close to it, actually. Um, due to timing of serial bus, I, I had to use a little bit slower clock, but it's close to 2, two megahertz. But these chips, when clocked at 2 megahertz, uh, they act really odd. Some of them don't run and start crashing right away. Some of them take a little bit longer, but they don't run too good. So uh, they do run, however, at around 1 megahertz. So I'm thinking that um, whoever made these chips maybe used original 1 megahertz version and just scratched off the, the lettering and re-stamped with the B marking indicating that this is a 2 megahertz version. I don't know. 
possibly, but yeah, uh, I think only one of those chips runs at two megahertz. The other uh, chips sooner or later uh, start failing. So, but they are still good enough to uh, play with at uh, s uh, smaller clock speed. That's still fun enough to play and and uh, fast enough to be used for certain applications. They don't really have to run at full two megahertz. Even at slower speed, you can have plenty of fun programming these chips. So, yeah, beware. Uh, lately, I've been buying uh, a lot of chips from eBay, and uh, they turned out to be defective, not work at all, or not work as they're supposed to. So there's a lot of those chips coming from China like that. So uh, beware buying uh, chips from China. There's a lot of fake chips there on, on eBay. But sometimes uh, you get lucky and you end up with good working chips. I have some of those as well. And that's not only um, applicable to these chips specifically, but also to other chips. I have another video in which I talk about how I ordered some uh, sound generator chips and they were defective as well. And again, you know, some fake chips from, from China that kind of sort of work the way they should, but not really. All right, enough of that. Um, have fun playing with electronics and see you in the next video.